Hello, I'm Vincent, and this is a tutorial on how you can use HyperNav to set up avoidance in your game. So I have here a scene with a bunch of agents that are going to be navigating through this maze. They're basically all navigating to the opposite point in the maze. And when I run it, you'll see that they all are able to find a path just fine, and they start out moving, but when they meet in the middle, they're going to end up in a traffic jam that's a bit worse than San Francisco during rush hour. So obviously this isn't going to work. They're never getting out of this situation. So with the new avoidance system, we can now do something about this. So the first thing I need to do to get avoidance working is go into Tools, Info Hazard, Create Avoidance Manager. Now you need to create this avoidance manager just like you need to create a NAV Pathfinder. This is just going to coordinate all the avoidance between the different agents in the scene. And the um, <clears throat> first couple things you're going to want to set up here are the time horizon and the max obstacles considered. This time horizon is basically how far into the future the agents are going to look in order to look for collisions. So it's currently set to 5, which means that they will look up to 5 seconds in the future to find anything that they might need to avoid. So if you want to lower that, you might be able to save some performance, or you can raise it to get um, like the most accuracy ahead of, uh, like have them be able to plan as early as possible. This max obstacles considered field is um, basically the, num the maximum number of other agents or obstacles that each agent can consider per frame. In this case, it's set to 10, so um, for each of these guys, they will only consider 10 obstacles. That might be a bit low. We also have um, 12 agents in the scene. So for now, I'm actually going to just bump this up to 11 so that um, they can all consider every other agent. But you will see later on that you can make this much higher if you need to, and it should still perform quite well. OK. So with the avoidance manager set up, we now need to set up avoidance on each individual agent. So I'm just going to click one of these guys. They're a prefab, so I can just do this once and um, don't have to do it once per agent. But anyway, I have my spline nav agent on here, and there's this new button here to add an avoidance agent. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that. It assigns the, yeah, assigns the avoidance agent here in this field and adds the new avoidance agent component down here. So I need to, let's see, just apply this to the prefab, which then enables me to apply this to the prefab. And then I'm going to go ahead and configure some of the properties in here. So the radiance, radius, this is basically how big this agent is. In this case, we have a sphere collider with radius 0.35. So I'm going to copy that and use that as the radius. The max speed, that is how fast the agent can travel at. It needs to know this to know how fast it can move to avoid other agents. In this case, the max speed of my demo script is set at 4, so I'm just going to copy that here. You can also set the max speed through a script if you want, so you don't have to param it here, and then you can control it dynamically if your object changes speed. Then for avoidance weight, we're going to keep that at one, um, and avoidance padding. We'll just keep this. We'll just keep all the other fields as the defaults. The radius and max speed are the ones that you're going to be most likely to need to change. And then this padding, you might want to make it like a fraction of your radius, just so they don't um, touch each other, basically. So yeah, we're going to apply these, and with that change, let's go ahead and run this again. And now you can see that they are pretty cleanly all able to make it through that center and reach their destinations. So that is how you set up avoidance. Um, of course, in this demo, all of the obstacles are also agents. But if you need to have just a like static obstacle, you can do that too. Like if I put a um, just random Let's say I have a random sphere in here. 
I can put in avoidance obstacle. I'm just going to use this avoidance obstacle base script here and keep these as default. Max speed is zero because it's not going to move. And that will now be considered an obstacle that these agents have to avoid. So you can see it does make it around that sphere. I think it is... Ah, uh, yes, it's lower than their level, so I'm going to just bring it up a little bit so that they have to do a little bit more effort to avoid it. And yeah, you can see that they are, in fact, avoiding that sphere. All right, so yeah, that is basically how you set up avoidance on agents that are using HyperNav for pathfinding. Um, that's it for this video. In the next one, I will be talking about how you can use the avoidance system uh, when you're not using HyperNav for pathfinding. So I will see you then. Goodbye.